Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Technically T hitting you with another video today and we got to go ahead and get into my Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra settings. Now this is the second time I recorded this video, the first time the autofocus was all jacked up, man. So we're doing it all over again. I'm going to basically, basically walk through my settings, how I have my phone laid out, some of the things that I did to get better battery life, and just show you some of the settings that I'm rolling with when it comes to display and, and different things like that. We're going to go, go over it all. So if you got questions about the setup or anything in this video, of course, let me know in the comment section down below and we can kind of get into it there. I didn't even know you could see me talking right here, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. So the first thing that we have to start off with, as you see, is the on-screen display. I have to have the always on display it's just what I need. I just I love it, and I'm mad that other phones don't have it. iPhone need always on display, but that's one thing I love about Android, man, and I love about the Note 20 Ultra. Basically, this is what I have going on. This is the clock style that I have when it comes to the always on display. You see my notifications there, my apps that I have notifications for, and you see the battery percentage. Now, I do have this on automatic brightness. Now, of course, you can control the always on display brightens, brightness in the settings, but I just kind of let it do its thing when we're talking about auto brightness. Just for the always on display, not for the actual phone itself. We'll get into that a little bit later. So always on display, you see I have that fingerprint scanner there, and that's basically the biometric that I choose to unlock my phone. Now I do have facial recognition as well, but we already know in the standard, the state of the, the new norm as everybody likes to say, the fingerprint scanner is gonna work every single time. And that's why I really like using this phone in the time that we're in now, wearing mask. The iPhone face ID is just not gonna work anymore. And then the fingerprint scanner comes in handy, especially when it's an A1 fingerprint scanner. And this fingerprint scanner on the Note 20 Ultra is literally the first one, the first Samsung fingerprint that I have not been frustrated with. So that's a big plus when we come to that. So that's gonna be the always on display. This is the style that I always use. Now, let's double tap and let's get to that lock screen. Now, as you can see here, I have the Black Panther wallpaper. Now, everybody is always asking me in all of my videos, where do I get my wallpapers from? Can you link me to the wallpaper? Can you do this? Can you do that? So today, I'm gonna show you exactly where I get my wallpapers from, man. So we're gonna scroll over in the apps. We're gonna go to a little program called Zedge. This is where I get all of my... <laughs> <laughs> this is where I get all of my wallpapers from. This is it right here, Zedge. So if you want something, boom, here it is for example, like the Black Panther wallpaper, you can click on this app and then they will show you basically other people's art that has Black Panther or something relevant to what you originally searched for. So you just go through all these and this is just Black Panther for an example. You'll get some ads in there because you can get a paid version, but this is gonna be the free version. As, as you can see, it has tons and tons of Black Panther wallpaper. When you find the one you want, you just hit set and you can adjust it. You can set it to your lock screen or you can set it to your home screen. So for everybody that wants to know where I get my wallpapers from, that's where I get them from, man. I get it from Zedge. So you can see here it is when it comes to my locks, my lock screen. You still get that same widget on the lock screen. You get the notifications. My two quick toggles that I have is the phone and the camera app. And uh, that's basically what I use to get into the phone. But I also have Samsung Pay where you can swipe up from the bottom. I'm not going to do it because my information is in. But I do have Samsung Pay set to swipe up from the bottom instead of swiping up when you're on the home screen. Because sometimes it can get in the way when we're talking about doing the gesture. So there it is. Always on display. Here is my lock screen. Boom. Let's go ahead and get into the phone itself. So here is going to be basically my go-to layout when we're talking about a home screen design when we, i'm using any android phone whether it's oneplus samsung pixel i can probably pull my pixel out if i had it and it show you it have the exact same layout now the way my layout is is up top i always have a weather widget now this weather widget because a lot of people also ask me what weather what weather widget are you using and this is going to be one weather so let's scroll it over one weather that's basically the weather widget that i have going on right now and then you can just set the widget up set it up how you want it i just basically shows you the current conditions and let you know the date the time the wind speed uh precipitation percentage and different things like that so this is going to be my weather widget that i use that usually covers almost the top half of my phone the next row down is going to be some of my most frequently used apps that's going to be the google play store youtube youtube studio twitter and the gallery and the other two rows are going to be basically folders of all the other apps that I use. So for, the first one is going to be the Google Nest app. Of course, it's not in the folder, but that's going to be the Nest app so I can see my Google cameras. 
social media, shopping, media, we got the Samsung, we have Google apps, tools, food, travel, even though we're not doing any of that right now. And we have the finance. So those are going to be my folders. And everybody always gets on me and say, that looks real iPhone. But it, it, that, that's just the way I have. I like my layout. I don't. I like to have folders. I like to be quickly accessible and different things like that. Now, on the final bottom row, we have the standards. You know, we got phone. We got messaging. We have Outlook. Now, I personally use Outlook as my email client, not the standard Gmail that comes on the phone. And that's basically because I have other email addresses that's not Gmail. So I tend to use Outlook. It, can, it, it, it all syncs well with my iMac. It just all comes together. So that's the reason why I use Outlook. Next to it is Google Chrome. Now I use Google Chrome instead of Samsung browser. Just because over the years, Chrome has all of my passwords and different things like that saved in it. So I just tend to use Google Chrome. And besides, I just like it a little bit better than the Samsung browser. And last but not least, on the end, we do have the camera. So that's my main home screen setup. I only legit have one other page and this is my widget page and you can only see I only have one widget and that's basically my smart thing shortcut. All of these just, just controls the Philip Hue lights in my house. So I got my living room, bedroom on and off in the studio where I'm in right now where I can control my lights, do all like that. Now usually I'm just turning them on and off. I don't really change the color temperature like that but if I do I can just go in the Hue app boom, change the temperature. But other than that, that's going to be all the apps. That's my home screen setup. I don't have any extra. I don't have anything. You see what I'm saying? I cut off the Samsung daily because I don't really want the Samsung daily down there. That's my home screen. And then there you go. You know what I mean? It, that's, that's all I have when we are talking about home screen. So let's go ahead and let me clear these out. Let's go ahead and jump into the settings and what's going on. So of course, we got to go ahead and start off with display. Now display, I'm on dark mode. You already know dark mode, everything. I don't even have it set up to where it's night mode, the day mode, and then turn to night. No, always on dark mode 100% of the time. I do have my brightness manually set now. It's set pretty low for this video, just so the screen won't be so bright and you really can't see what's going on, but I do not use adaptive brightness. I like to manually set my brightness because I feel like adaptive brightness still messes with the battery just a little bit. And I'm trying to figure out what settings here or there can yield me better battery life. So what I end up doing was just turning the adaptive brightness off and I actually set it manually. Usually it'll be a little over half and that's the way I rock with it throughout the day until I get in the bed and then I kind of cut it completely down. Um, and that's kind of how I rock my brightness. Now for motion smoothness, right now you see I do have adaptive motion smoothness. Now. I'm also still trying to, you know, figure out the battery and I just love the 120 hertz. I just love how smooth it is. I'm just going to be real. Now, do I require it? No, but I do like the way it feels. I like how smooth it is. And so far, so right now I'm using adaptive. And of course, when you use adaptive, you got to use at full HD plus. I would love to use that quad HD and the 120 hertz, but you know, unfortunately, Samsung isn't really letting us do that right now. Blue light filter, I always have, have off. Screen mode, I always like to put it on vivid just because I like to have those punchy colors when it comes to the Samsung display. Font size is always going to be set to three right here on the little scale. And I always use the Samsung one font. I don't know. I just I just like it. No screen zoom, anything like that. Screen timeout is usually set to about a minute. I just have it set to 10 minutes right now so it doesn't go dim when I'm doing this video. Um, edge screen, I personally turn off. I really don't care for edge lighting and I never really use the edge panel. So I always find myself just cutting the edge screen off. I know a lot of people like using it, but me personally, I just usually cut it off. Accidental touch protection, I do have that activated. Even though this does have a curved display on the edges, I really don't find myself getting any accidental touches and I'm not sure if that's the cause of it or I'm just used to using them like that. Touch sensitivity, of course, if you run a screen protector, if you have a glass screen protector or anything like that, you would want that setting going. And uh, I think that's it for display. You get the always on display and you have video enhancer now. Some people like this, but me personally, it's already usually set at the brightness that I want to watch my video. So basically when you turn on video enhancer, it just makes, and you can see the image, it just makes it brighter or dimmer. Now, personally, I like it off. I don't need it at full brightness when I'm when I'm watching the video. So I like to keep video enhancer off. So that's kind of what's going on when we're talking about my display settings. So next up, wallpaper. You guys already seen what's going on with wallpaper. I have stock themes. I already showed you what's going on with the lock screen. Biometrics and security. 
I have fingerprint and facial recognition set up. And of course, you gotta have that pin code. When we're talking about location, the location settings are important to me because the location is one of the things that drains batteries the most. And I make sure I put all of my apps on, just allow when I'm using the actual app, not all the time, because if you put it all the time, you're gonna be draining battery in the background. And one thing that I always like to turn off is my Google location history. So if I hit my actual Google account, it'll pull it up and I always make sure to turn location history off because I think this will eventually drain a little bit more battery in the background. And that's just one set that I've always, you know, always seem to turn off. So if you guys wanna see a separate video about all of the Android battery saving tips that I do, let me know in the comment section down below, man. I can make that video happen. Other than that, accounts and backup, I have everything backed up via Samsung. So if I switch devices, boom, we can do it like that. Um, advanced controls, I do have my side key set up for, if I double press it, it opens up my Samsung Pay. And then of course, if I press and hold it, it does bring up my power off menu. So that's kind of how I have mine set up. I do have a few Bixby routines. I have before bed. So basically when I get in bed, I like to activate that routine. It basically turns the brightness all the way down, turns do not disturb on, and it just does a few functions to let me know that I'm actually in bed and that's what I do. Same thing with the Gaming with Galaxy Buds Plus. That's actually, well, <laughs> <laughs> live drop test. <laughs> That's actually an old routine that I had with my Galaxy Buds Plus. I don't really use that that much anymore and I actually have to update that one. But that's what's going on with my advanced screen. Uh, not really much going on in this that you really need to know. Um, device care. So let's talk about device care really quick. So right now, mine is at 98% out of 100. Let's go over to the battery and let me go ahead and show you the settings that I have right now when it comes to the battery. So my power mode that I use, of course, is optimized. I do turn off adaptive power saving off because a lot of people have kind of been working with this. My main English, Dan, if you don't know who he is, he actually made a video talking about adaptive power saving it may be a little glitch because when it's off, it actually saves battery, but when you activate it, it drains more battery. Kind of weird, but so far, I just leave it off. I don't even ask any questions about it. Uh, app power management, I have adaptive battery on to um, limit battery usage for apps that you don't use. And I used the setting of put unused apps to sleep. So that's kind of what I got going on. And checking out my battery usage for today, as you guys can see here, I'm at 21%. I'm almost right at six hours of screen on time today. So that's kind of what's going on with the battery life, man. I'm pulling consecutive six app, almost seven hours of screen on time. Wireless power share. I don't use that at all. Uh, you don't really gotta use it. When, 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 when you use it, you don't wanna use it with a case on it. You wanna take the case off, but I never use PowerShare. Don't really have to worry about that. And charging, I have everything going except fast charging, super fast and fast wireless charging. Uh, anything else that we gotta talk about? I guess we can go in developer options. And um, you know, I did the norm when we're talking about developer options. I go down here to the very bottom and I always change window transition and the animator scale from one times to 0.5 times. That just makes everything just a little bit more snappy. And when you go in and out of apps, open the apps and different things like that, it's a little bit easier to kind of uh, navigate. But overall, I think that is basically my setup when it comes to this. When we come to the toggles, man, I really don't I have the ones that I use mostly on the first two rows and then the rest of them are kind of whatever it is, but that's gonna be basically my setup for my Note 20 Ultra. Once again, this is kind of my setup for all Android devices, period. You can always catch this same home screen layout, some of the same settings. It may change, vary to from phone to phone, especially when we're talking about refresh rates and different things like that. But for the most part, this is basically how I set up my Note 20 Ultra. And of course, I have my app drawer when you swipe up and I have all of the apps. So this is kind of a what's on my and also just how I have my phone set up. Hopefully you guys got some ideas about how you want to set up your Note 20 Ultra or your Samsung device. Hopefully you saw some of the settings that I use. I'm getting good battery life, so if you want to, go and replicate these settings and maybe you can get better battery life on your device, man. But take it to you, I'm about to get up out of here. If you guys have any questions about anything going on with this setup, let me know in the comment section down below and I will be sure to let you know 
answer your questions. If you guys think there's any cool little tweaks or hacks or apps that I might want and might need on my Note 20 Ultra, let me know down below as well, man, because I know there's so much widgets, so many things that can enhance your experience when it comes to Android. But we about to get up out of here, man. Make sure y'all do all the YouTube things, like, comment, hit that sub, turn the bell on, and you already know everybody out there, please be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. Later.